Welcome back. I'm so glad you can join me again. Well, we're back in the Unreal Editor for some fun frolic and merriment. And I know I said I wasn't going to do a bunch of these first-person character uh, improvements all in a row, but I'm just having too much fun. I think if we continue down this path, we're going to end up with a, with a little bit of a usable game, and I think that's going to get very interesting. So we're going to limit today to just a couple things, and this is what they look and sound like. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a sound for our jump, and that's what this sounds like. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Huh. And that's a custom sound, and we're actually using three sounds, and we're selecting them randomly, which I think is a nice little touch. We'll look at how that's wired up. We'll do the same thing for our crouch. So here's the left uh, control key. Huh. And we've actually got a sound both for the crouch up and crouch down. And again, it's three sounds and they're being selected randomly. So we'll show how to wire that up. Uh, we'll do our run some other time because that's a little bit more complicated. But I think for now, we'll just stick with those sounds. And that'll be a little bit better for the immersion. Then what we'll also look at today is we're going to create a, a line trace out of our gun or a line trace that follows our projectile. And that's kind of how that looks. And we're going to have to align our line trace with our reticle or our cross here. And we'll see why we have to do that. But it's going to get interesting with these line traces because now we can sense where our projectiles are colliding with things. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to be heading towards some sort of shooting gallery game. And I just made this little guy. And I'll see if I can nail him. It's not easy. And, uh, well, I missed him twice. Let's get close. There, I got him there. And uh, if we can sense collision on our projectile, we can start doing some interesting things. We can start applying decals, like bullet hits where our projectiles hit. We can put an emitter, like a little puff of smoke or a spark. Or we can actually even generate points and scores and things. So I think, you know, if we head towards a game, I think this is going to start getting a little bit more interesting. So that's where we're going to head. So again, just to recap, today we're going to look at, uh, let's see here, adding sound to our crouch and jump. And we'll uh, create a line trace out of our gun, as well as align the reticle with the line trace. So let's jump in. So to add our sounds, we're going to start off in our little uh, first-person character map. So I'm just going to jump in there really quick. That's our quadruple A Tom character map. We set that aside for our character. And in the last video, I did fail to show something, and I thought I should just kind of back up a little bit and get into that uh, real quick. So if we go into the content folder under first person blueprint, we jump into blueprints and we go into that first person character. In this section here is where the projectile is, and if you remember in the last video, we tweaked this sound here and put in our Smith & Wesson, and I had kind of lamented that that sound was loose. And what I meant by that was that within the sound clip, there's a little bit of a pause and then the sound starts. It's not much of a pause. And we can actually fix that in the editor. Yeah, and I'll show you that in a second, but let's analyze that Smith & Wesson sound. So if we get out of here and we jump into Audacity, I'll talk about Audacity in a minute. But here's the sound. If we analyze it, we can see at the beginning of the clip, there's this sort of dead space and then it comes in. It's not much, I'll just play it. But there's just that tiny little hesitation. And for a gunshot, it should be instantaneous as soon as the player uh, you know, clicks the mouse button. Now, if we didn't have a sound program like Audacity, we can actually fix that right in the editor. So here's that play sound, and that's that Smith & Wesson sound. If we take that uh, play sound at location node and we expand it, we've got something down here called start time. And start time basically means that we can tell the engine to start playing that clip at a certain time. It doesn't have to start at the, right at the front. And I should have adjusted that to 0.25. Now, just to explain that a little bit more, for example, if our clip was, say, two seconds long and we put a start time of one second, the editor would play that sound only the last second of it. Now, it'd be handy to have an end time as well, and that's where I ran into some issues uh, on our custom sounds. But just by that little tweak, we can see if we go into the map that that tightens that sound up. So I should have mentioned that about that uh, sound node. So here it is. And now there's no hesitation. As soon as I press that, that fire button, that sound plays. And that just feels more natural and it's more natural. It's not much of a difference, that 0.25 seconds, but um, it was good to um, point that out because I didn't mention that in the first one. So just expand that. And you have some other controls here as well. You can modulate the uh, pitch, which is kind of interesting. And if that sound is too loud, you can see here I attenuated it. So I think the default is 1 and I brought it down to 0.25 just so it wasn't blowing my ears off. But when you finish your game, you can adjust all these uh, different volumes to give you a pleasant audio experience. So there it is there. So to add some sounds to our run, uh, sorry, not run, our crouch and jump, 
I went to the internet and I really couldn't find any stock sounds. So it was time to take the plunge and record some natural, uh, so record some custom sounds. <clears throat> That's what I ended up doing. Now I didn't have any uh, sound software on this computer, so I just went on the internet and I found this beautiful little program called Audacity. <clears throat> You've probably heard of it, but it's this amazing little open source program. And actually, just uh, the link is www.audacityteam.org. You can see it here. If we pop that open, it gives us this free little program. It's open source, totally free, and God bless these guys for giving this to us, this wonderful gift. And you just go ahead and download that onto your system, <clears throat> and I've got it here now. And it takes about five minutes to learn how to use it, so it's fantastic. Now, I'm lucky in that I have a microphone already for my YouTube videos, and uh, when I installed the program and opened it, it sensed it, and I was all ready to go. So if we went to into, a, say, a new project here, and it opens up a, a second window, so we can just close down this gunshot one here. And there it is there, and I'll take you about five minutes to learn how to use it. And all I had to do was, you know, press record up here and just start recording some jump and crouch sounds. You know, some like, huh, huh. Hiya, Kia, whatever. You know, you can record whatever you like. And it's so simple in Audacity, you can just trim this by grabbing just the sound so we don't have any dead space before or after it. We can come up here and sort of trim the audio outside selection like so. And then we just grab it, bring it over here to the beginning of the timeline. We could go to File Export, and we just export that as a WAV, and we can export those sounds. And this uh, Audacity is wonderful. It's free. It's very simple to use, more than enough that we need to do some basic editing. So, All right, so that's how I made my custom sound. So actually, we can close Audacity, put that guy to sleep. So I got my sounds here. Uh, where do I have them here? Not here, but here. There we are. And I recorded actually three jump sounds, and you'll see why I did three there. And I did some crouch sounds, and there's some miscellaneous, uh, so that's fine. And as we saw in um, our last video, it's really easy to import sounds into the editor here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So there it is there. So let's come out to here. And if you remember, in the root folder, I created Tom Custom Assets and then Audio. You can put these anywhere you like, set up your full, uh, file folder structure how you like. I just kind of organize it this way because it's handy. And then you just select your sounds. So I'm going to select all the crouch sounds and all the jump sounds. Just drag them in there and there they are. And we can preview them. All right, so we brought in our sounds. Just that easy. Even easier than the Doom 3 engine as I like to constantly point out. So back in our first person character, we can create these notes from scratch, but we already have some audio notes here, so we can do a bit of copy and pasting. This is inside that projectile area. This is where we added that gunshot sound. So I'm lazy today. I'm just going to grab these two notes here. I'm just going to uh, control C to copy them and let's deselect it. And let's go over to first to our jump and let's just uh, paste those two nodes in there. And one thing we have, well, we have to adjust a couple of things, but first thing we want to do is make sure the start time is at zero because we've trimmed our audio sound, so we don't need to mess with that. All right, so let's do that. And volume, we can keep it, well, we can put the volume up at one. We'll make it a multiplier of one. All right, there it is there. And then, of course, we want to select one of our, well, let's do the jump first. So let's just uh, filter for jump. We've got our three jump sounds. We'll go ahead and put that guy in there. That's there. Let's collapse this. And then we just want to come out of this uh, in our jump little sequence here, just out of this note here, the, uh, the, the character jump, and just go ahead and put that right there. And that's all we need to do. So we can compile and save that. Let's go into the map. And we should have our jump sound. So I'm just going to hit the space key. Huh. 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 And there it is, and you can stop right there. Now, the only drawback to that is it's a single, uh, a single jump sound. Huh. Huh. And I find in a game where you're doing a lot of jumping, having the same sounds a bit monotonous. So we can kind of liven that up a little bit. And here's how to do that. Real simple. So within my Tom uh, Custom Assets audio folder, I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to here for sounds. And I'm going to create a sound cue. And we could do this uh, jump cue, let's say. Now, the nice thing about creating a sound cue is we can process our sound a little bit before we bring it into the game. We're just going to do some very simple processing. So let's double click that sound cue and let's go in here. It's already put an output note on there for us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag in three wave, no, wave players. Let's grab three of those. Just grab them, drag them in and release them. There's all three. And let's assign our three different jump sounds to these uh, nodes here. 
So we can come up to this one, click on that one, and then we can find our sound. So let's uh, filter for jump. And let's put sound one in there. This one will go sound two. Uh, filter for jump. There's sound two. And the reason we're doing this is we can randomize uh, the selection of these sounds. I'll explain that just in a second. So jump. So instead of just playing the same jump sound over and over again, we can randomly select these every time the jump is, is hit. So once we have those wave players in, we can bring in a random and just drag that in there. And then we can just connect these ones. Well, let's add an input because we need th at least three. We can add as many as we want, but let's go ahead and do one, two, and three. And then just drag this out to the output like that. And then we can, we can actually uh, kind of preview that. Let's click that random node and let's hit play. You can see every time it's hit, it's playing randomly one of these jump sounds. So that's going to bring that to life a little bit. So let's go ahead and save that. And we can close that sound cue. Let's go back into our first person character. And that sound for our jump area here, let's just select that cue instead. So we can filter for jump, and then we're going to find our jump cue there. All right, so just that simple. So if we compile and save and go into our map, now we've got a sound when we jump, and it's randomized to three different kind of sounds. So here's what it sounds like. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Just that simple. And again, we can come back in here, and we've got some controls. We don't want to mess with the start time because uh, we've trimmed our sounds, but we can, you know, do a pitch multiplier. You can play around with this stuff. It's kind of fun. And the volume, if that's too loud, we can always, you know, crank that down to 0.25. I'm going to leave it at 1 just because I want to hear it on the video, so. Okay, so I think I'm going to just uh, cut the video here for a second. We're going to basically make a sound cue. Well, let's just go ahead and do that in real time. We can do that in real time. That's no problem. Okay, let's go back into the map and let's create another cue here. So down to here, sounds, sound cue, and we'll do our crouch here. So let's do a crouch cue. There we are. Hit enter. Let's go inside that, and let's put in another three wave players. One, two, and three. And then let's assign these ones our three crouch sounds. So we'll select the first one we'll come down here and we're gonna filter for crouch let's put in sound one we'll put sound two in this one uh, crouch sound two same thing that we did for the jump but we're gonna do it for the crouch it's a little bit different for the crouch because we're gonna be putting in crouch up and down so very simple to do all right and let's assign crouch three there we are let's put in another random because again, it, the, uh, the game's the engine's going to basically select one of three of these in random order. Oh, we have to go add inputs. Okay, there we go. And let's go ahead and drag all three of these in here. Just this easy, and it's so fun. We're not going to get too much into the audio, but it's amazing how much control you actually have just in the editor. So, okay, there's that cue. We won't uh, bother previewing that. So let's go back into our first person character. And then here is our player crouch with line tracing that we did last time. I cleaned that up a little bit, but let's grab that whole lot there and just move it out to here. So let's grab a, a copy of this, play sound on location. Again, we can build these notes from scratch, but I'm a little bit lazy. So I'm just going to copy and paste these. Control C. And I'm going to come over here and just uh, control V for pace. There it is there. And before we forget, let's take out that start time and let's do it right at zero. There we go. And we just have to figure out where the best place to plug this sound in, like how to actually trigger it or cue it. So I think the best place to do it, uh, let's see here so we don't disrupt anything, is here, okay, for example, when we're doing our crouch animation and we're setting our walk speed to 300, I think we could come out of there. I'm going to kind of leave this messy today. I'll clean it up later, but I'll just show you where to hook it up. So there it is there. I'm going to come out of that ma uh, walk's max speed. So when we crouch and we go to speed 300, I'm going to hit that play sound. And I am going to hit our crouch cue. So there it is there. Perfect. And we're good here, right? We're not start time zero. Okay, the sound, well, it's a little bit down. I'll put it one just for the video. I'm going to make it a little bit louder. Okay, there it is there. 
And let's grab these two and copy and paste them. And let's do the same for the uncrouch. So here's the uncrouch animation. Here's the set walk speed back to 600. I'll copy and paste or just paste that there. Let's come out of here and put it into our play sound. And I think we're good Yeah, on the settings. Okay, so there's our crouch sounds, just that easy. So if you followed along the last video, you kind of saw where I plugged this in. So just follow along and you'll be fine. So we should be good for first our jump. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And we can see it's randomly selecting one out of the three. And then our crouch, which is the control key, left control. Huh. Huh. So it actually has a sound on crouch and on crouch. Huh. And it's randomly selecting one out of three. So there's a, there's yeah. livening up our little character here with some sounds. And we'll do our run sound a little bit later because it's a bit more complicated. And uh, we'll leave that for another video. But uh, for now, there's the sounds for that. So let's take a look at this line trace. So for this line trace, we're going to start off in the, let's see here. Let's go down to our root folder. We're going to start off in the first person blueprint and the blueprints in our first person character. And to build this line trace, we're going to need seven nodes, and we can bring them into our first person character's blueprint event graph, but we can do it in a way that's a little bit more clean. Rather than building seven more nodes in here, we can uh, build it off in a separate blueprint, and then bring it in here by calling a single function. So here's how we do that. Let's add a function here, and let's call that line trace. There it is there. And it's opened up a new event graph here for us, I guess. No, well, not an event graph, but a little blueprint here for our line trace. So let's drag on out on here, and let's put in line trace by channel. Put that guy there. So to start a line trace, and we looked at this uh, for our crouch, how to put in a line trace. So some of this is going to be familiar with us. Now, instead of our capsule, we're going to use our first person camera. So let's drag that guy out there. Uh, let's click here, drag out, and go to Get World Location. There it is there. And that is going to be our start point. So we're just going to start at our first person camera. Now our end point, we're going to take it off of our first person camera. And the reason we're taking it off the first person camera is obviously we want that trace to be pointing in the direction that the camera's pointing. So we can t tilt and pan, and our line trace will follow that action, right? So there's that is. All right, so let's go out of here and get forward uh, vector, get forward vector. Last time we did rotation, but this time we wanted to go out on the X uh, axis. So we'll just get our forward, uh, forward vector here. Then we'll drag out of here, and then we have to multiply this. So I'm going to hit the Shift 8 for the asterisk key. And we're going to multiply a vector times a float here, so just like that. And this is going to determine the length of our line trace. I'm going to make it quite long. We'll go 20,000. Now we have to also tell this endpoint, like give it a start as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and I'm going to just hit the shift plus key. And we're going to go for, let's see here, vector plus vector. So let's go plus vector, filter for plus vector plus vector and we want vector plus vector so there's that all right so what we want to do uh, let's see here don't want to cross the stream so we're going to come out of here and put that into that channel there and we're going to come out of here and put that into there and then go up here to end so what we're doing here so we're taking that uh, first person camera we're giving it a forward vector of 20,000 units and we're adding it to the world location and that's our end point so there that is we can save and compile now what we have to do is call this function so well, we can leave that window open let's go back into the event graph and I want to uh, trigger that uh, that line trace when I press the trigger here so let's just shift this down a little bit and this is where we're input action fires so I want to put it in here so we can we can call that function this is how easy it is should be able to come here and find our line trace function which is right there let's select it and drag it in and I'll pretty this up later but so all we have to do is we can break this line here and we're gonna come 
out of pressed, we're going to draw the line trace, and then we're going to come back in here just like that. So that's the only alteration. We're going to use the original projectile that uh, Epic built us. So just like that. And that should give us our line trace. So let's have a quick look to see how that looks. Oh, and what we want to do, uh, let's see here in this line trace down here, we want to draw the debug because we want to see it. So there's persistent. OK, there we go. We know how to do this. We did this in our crouch video. So we're just building on stuff we've already learned. And there we have a line trace. OK, now one thing we're going to notice right away, and it's super annoying, is that the line trace is not aligned with the crosshair. So we have to fix that. OK, so we're not going to oogle over our line traces. It's, just, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing having line traces. But we're also not oogle. We have to fix that alignment. So as you can see, it's not aligned with the crosshair. So we got to fix that. So how we do that is if we're in our root folder, we can go to our first person blueprint, blueprints, and then in here we see this first person HUD. So let's pop that open. And we can see right here, we're setting the HUD X and Y values. Uh, we'll divide two, that's fine. But they're adding 20 here to the Y. So even if we take that out, so let's just, uh, well, we can just break the, break the traces here. Alt, left mouse button, just, just drag it on here. If we take this straight out into here, so we have no correction, we save and compile it, you'd think it would be aligned, but it's st still not aligned, it's a little off. And I found how to fix that, is we want to do a little bit of, uh, we want to move it to the right and down and up. And I experimented with, with adding here and subtracting here. Subtracting seems to work the best. So I'm going to break these little traces. I'm going to come out of here, and I'm going to hit the minus key. And we want to go minus, let's see here, integer. Integer minus integer. There it is there. Let's drag that out to there. Let's uh, hit Control W, which is duplicate, and do that here. And I'll explain what I'm doing here just in a second. And the value I found that works here is 6. So let's just put in 6. And just to show you that, that those numbers and that setup works, so we can just go into here real quick. And now it should be aligned with the reticle or the crosshair. And you can see it's virtually dead on. So what we did there was we took that xy value of where we're going to place the cursor, we've divided it by 2, and then we've minus 6, and that brings us aligned, so we can just actually get rid of that. So I don't want to get into this too much because it's a little drab. It's just uh, setting the xy coordinates for the reticle or the crosshair, and we're just adjusting a, li a little to the right and down just so it uh, lines up perfectly. So there it is there. So that's it for this video pretty much. But it is exciting because we've got these line traces now. And their mechanic is really cool is when we shoot, we get that red uh, square and that's where we're sensing collision. And then the line keeps drawing because it is showing what it's hitting behind it. So we can kind of mess the way that works, mess with that a little bit. But <gasps> why this is exciting is now we can sense when our collision, uh, sorry, our projectile collides with things. So again, we could place a decal there, or a little emitter, like a little poof of smoke, or a spark or something, or we can even register points there. And we can apply that not only to geometry, but to enemies and, and such. And this is going to be getting, our, 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 getting us well on our way to cre actually starting to create a little game. And that's kind of what I got my eye on over the next maybe two, three videos, is probably a shooting gallery game. Hey yeah. So that's what we're building uh, towards. So, so there it is. Keep editing, and we'll see you soon. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. It really helps us out. All the best, and you guys stay well.